Hello everyone, so it's me again. So today we are going to be looking at something very, very important. Okay, so sometimes when you go for your interview, they may ask you something like, how do you validate analyzer? Okay, so today we are going to be looking at analyzer validation. Okay, I know sometimes people do call it something like, how do you verify analyzer? So we are going to look at it in detail. But once again, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Obodo. I've been working in the UK as a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. So yeah, let's start. So I'm going to try to give you, I like to always start off with giving a background, you know. So I want to give you a picture so that you can have a clear picture of what analyzer validation means, okay? So I want you to think about, remember that for, if you have experience, if you already have experience in the UK, working in the UK, you hear something like uh, result validation or result authorization or result release. So what it means is that before a biomedical scientist will release a result or will validate a result or will authorize a result, you need to first of all investigate that result and once you see that that result is consistent with that patient, then you can release it. In other words, you've done all your investigation and you trust that result, that is why you can release it. That is why you can validate it. So, what is then analyzer validation? I want to also give you another picture where you have analyzer A and you have used this analyzer A for a very long time, let's say 20 years, as the case may be, and you feel like you want to upgrade. And because you want to upgrade, you then decide to buy another analyzer. So when you buy another analyzer, how do you then know that this your new analyzer will be giving you a reliable result or will be giving you reliable results as the one you already have? And that process, that process you are going to go through before doing that, before accepting that analyzer, before start using that new analyzer is called analyzer validation. Now, what, what is then analyzer validation? So you have this new analyzer that you've bought. How can you validate it? You are going to validate that analyzer by doing a lot of things. What it generally means is that you want to test that analyzer to make sure that one, it is functioning as recommended by the manufacturers. Two, that that analyzer is going to be giving you good results. That the result will be precise and it will also be accurate. Okay? Three, you also want to make sure that that analyzer is sensitive. When I, what do I mean by sensitive? So, you want to show that, you want to make sure that that analyzer is sensitive to abnormal results. Like whether it is low result or high result. You want to make sure. So, because of that, you are going to test that analyzer. So, to validate analyzer, you start off with first. Of course, there will be an installment. They will install the analyzer. And following the installing the analyzer, you then need to do the first thing. To do maintenance and you do your calibration. After you've done maintenance and you've done calibration, if everything is working and they are in order, then you do your quality control. Okay? And remember as well that the quality control you are doing will have both normal sample, abnormal sample, Abnormal, I mean, is low and high abnormal sample result. So you are going to do all that. Once the quality control sample has passed, then you do another thing. Because the passing of that very quality control indicates that, yes, any result you are going to be getting will be accurate, it will be precise. Remember, if you have done that, let's say the maintenance fell, or the calibration fell, or the quality control sample fell, and you've done everything and it didn't work, there's no any way you will validate that analyzer. Validation means that you are happy that that analyzer is, go is going to give you a reliable result. Therefore, you are happy to use it. You are saying, this is not good to be used. So let me continue. So, but the quality control has passed. Following the control passing, you can then run the patient sample. So when you are running the patient sample, you are going to run, you know, you are going to run both normal patient sample, abnormal patient sample. Again, abnormal high or low patient sample, like abnormality. And why are you doing both normal, abnormal, like low 
or high, you are doing it because you want to see how sensitive is the analyzer, you know, when a result is abnormal. Also, so you want to know that the analyzer is able to detect, give a reliable result when it is normal, when it is low, or when it is high. So that is why you're going to run the patient sample, normal, abnormal, high, and abnormal, low. So once you've done that, another thing that you need to look at again is in doing that abnormal result, you also want to see or try to determine would anything, does the analyzer, is it sensitive enough to detect interference? Let me give you an example. Maybe there are so many factors that you know that can affect that result, okay? What you need, what you need to do is to use that very that patient sample that has that thing. I'm going to give you a good example. Let's say there's what we call complement. Or, like I had mentioned to you guys about codaglutinin, okay? Or autoantibody, as the case may be. So, whichever way, let's just say something like uh, uh, C3D, which is complement, that affects blood group and antibody screening. Or something like codaglutinin, that can affect blood group and antibody screening, and it can also affect hematology result, that full blood count result. Now, let's say if there is any patient that has this possibility, you use it as well to test the analyzer. So you use all kinds of abnormal results to test the analyzer to make sure that that analyzer is going to give you results that is consistent with what you know about that patient. Now, after you've done that, you are not sure that everything is working. What do you do? Because when it gives you that result, you are comparing the result that that analyzer is giving to you with what you already know about that very result or that sample. Once it matches what you already know about the sample, let's say you, you know that this patient has neutropenia and you run the sample on that new analyzer and it gives you neutropenia. Yes, that means it's correct. Or let's say the person has something like um, polycythemia and you run that uh, you run that sample on that very res uh, analyzer and it gives you polycythemia result. So that means you cannot trust the analyzer. That means the analyzer is reliable, okay? And remember that after you've done that, it now gives you confidence that that analyzer is reliable, then you can then validate the analyzer. So what do you mean by validation? Do not accept that the analyzer should be used in the laboratory, that the analyzer should be used to run the patient sample. Because you have gone through a process and you've determined whether the analyzer should be used or not. And because the analyzer has passed these very processes, you can then accept it. And let me also say this, because in running the patient sample, it is up to the manager depending to because there has to be you need to run the sample parallel sample okay so it's up to the manager to determine how many samples that they really want to run but in most cases you might need to run up to 20 to 50 samples so you need to run up to 20 to 50 samples on that new analyzer so those 20 to 50 samples will include both normal and abnormal like i've said so once the analyzer has given you reliable result all true you can then accept that that, that analyzer should be used to run the patient sample. Once you accept it, okay, that is then called analyzer validation. In other words, you've validated that analyzer that it is reliable, it is good, it can then be used. So now let's put this together. If you go for interview and they ask you, what is analyzer validation? Or tell us, what do you think about analyzer validation? The answer is that you just need to let them know that an analyzer validation is just a way of ensuring that the analyzer is giving you a reliable result. So what you do is that following the installing of that very analyzer, okay, that what it then means that you need to do maintenance, you need to do the calibration. Once it passed the maintenance, it has passed the calibration. The next thing to do is to do the quality control sample. So when you do the quality control sample and it passed, you then need to then test that analyzer with a patient sample, all kinds of patient sample, normal and abnormal. That way you want to determine whether the, the, the analyzer will be sensitive to determine to uh, measure low result, high result, and normal result. So once you have run different patient sample on that analyzer, okay, let's say up to 20 to 50 samples on that analyzer, and all of them, they are giving you consistent result. Because you they are giving you consistent result, and of course, you are going to compare this result 
with what you already know about that very samples. For an example, maybe sample you had already run from a, that you are already run from an analyzer you are using in the laboratory already. Okay, so once you compare the results that this new analyzer is giving you, this twenty to fifty sample results that the analyzer is giving to you, once you compare it with what you already know about the sample, if it is consistent. What it means then is that you are going to accept that analyzer to be used in the laboratory to run a patient to run the patient sample. Therefore, once that is accepted that this analyzer is reliable, or once that is proven that this analyzer is reliable, is therefore called analyzer validation. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So, if I'm going to put it in steps, step one in analyzer validation, the step one is of course that you install the analyzer. And after the analyzer is taught, the step two is to do maintenance, analyzer maintenance, calibration, okay? And after you've done the maintenance and calibration, the next thing to do is to do the quality control. And once you've done the quality control, what you are trying to check, which is the next thing, is how precise and accurate it is. And you will determine that if your quality control has passed. Because the quality control has high, low, and normal samples okay or control samples you can then determine the sensitivity of that very analyzer by running all kinds of patient result samples on that analyzer different kinds of patient both normal one deranged one very deranged samples you can run it there okay so once it has given you consistent results showing that it is sensitive to all kinds of conditions all kinds of results the next thing to then do is to accept that that analyzer can then be used and that is validation and here you go that is your analyzer validation if you go for the interview and the accident yes if you do have any question please put it in the comment section and can I also ask you to subscribe like share with your friends and family thank you very much till I come back away again bye bye